plus uh have to click it got on uh so again good morning everybody and thanks for joining us on this pretty late day in the semester and um this is not a very topic oriented seminar so let's see how it will uh, proceed a title is uh, talking physics and um, a first question is what are the differences between seemingly very similar statements talking physics or talking about physics when the our seminar was invented a few years ago the reason was that we wanted to continue a tradition which existed since the time a hub of the warsaw and in a sense of polish physics was still located on hoja street in warsaw and uh, students of physics department had to participate in consecutive two seminars the first was called the pro seminar in experimental physics and usually was uh, uh, supervised by uh, a very active and very at that time uh, uh, prominently leading physics uh, high energy physicists from Hoja Street, uh, Janusz Zakrzewski and Andrzej Rubleski. And uh, next year, there was a seminar in theoretical physics, which was run by two distinguished theoretical physicists, Professor Ivo Białynicki Birula and Professor Andrzej Trautman. And those seminars were planned to prepare students to be able to talk. And now the question came, talk about the physics, that is to be able to tell, yes, I have heard that there is a phenomenon like this and that, or talk physics. And talking physics means to be able to talk about the topic of a given phenomenon, given theory, and or given discovery. We, when I was a student at the physics department in the uh, early 60s, we were extremely happy because this was a time of a uh, many, many important discoveries in physics. Uh, one of the topics on our seminar, which clearly was important for the future, that was lasers. I remember uh, a seminar on which we were discussing uh, a first paper by Maiman on uh, uh, first maser and later on, on the first solid state laser, and eventually a paper by Jovan uh, from MIT who built up a first gaseous laser uh, filtered to, to Warsaw, courtesy the, the library, which was receiving, that is also a, a interesting historical fact, uh, Chinese copies of the physical review. And um, so the important thing was to teach students to talk about physics, but not about physics like in the popular science journals, but talking physics that you understand deeply what is the phenomenon you are discussing. And our idea with the seminar, which comes to the conclusion today, was 
to convince uh, our PhD students from the Institute of Physics and from theoretical physics, from the Center for Theoretical Physics and for associated institutions, which nowadays participate in the PhD schools, that it is important for a future scientist to be able to talk about, not about physics, but talk physics. And why? Because uh, physics is a particular science. It is the only branch of this giant endeavor, which we call science, which uh, combine in it two different kinds of a description of a world around us, a universe, if you want, namely a qualitative and a quantitative description. There is no other branch of science where the qualitative and quantitative descriptions are put together, amalgamated into the one structure. And uh, I will, if I will search a history to show the example of a, a one of the giants of physics who was a, an example of that amalgamation of qualitative and quantitative, or if you want theoretical and experimental physics, that was Enrico Fermi. He was equally well uh, acting in the true laboratory, building such a not so simple experimental devices like a nuclear reactor or developing a theory like of contributing to the foundations of a quantum mechanics in the 20s. So the seminar title of today is Talking Physics, for we wanted to have the seminar teaching our younger colleagues to talk physics, not to talk about physics only. Uh, let me show you the quotation. The science do not try, the sciences do not try to explain that hardly ever try to interpret. They mainly make models. By a model is meant a mathematical construct, which with the addition of a certain verbal interpretations describes observed phenomena. The justification of such a mathematical construct is solely and precisely that is expected to work. And that definition of a science is give, was given by the John von Neumann. John von Neumann was one of the giants of a 20th century mathematics. And if you look on what is happening now in science, and we will come to that at the end of, uh, in the second part of my seminar. Uh, a, a, a legacy of von Neumann is still directing uh, many aspects of development of a con contemporary, uh, contemporary, contemporary science. Let me show you a picture of John von Neumann. This is John von Neumann, uh, 50, he died at the age of 54 due to the multiple cancers. And uh, here it is photographed in the front of the uh, computer built at the Princeton in the basement of the Institute of Advanced Studies. And uh, on the right of the slide, I have shown there was no more place. Uh, title pages for uh, a few books written by John von Neumann. And uh, the one of them is the Mathematical Foundation of Quantum Mechanics. 
The other is a book with Oscar Morgenstern, which uh, was the game theory beginning. The book, the, type, the, the picture on the bottom is The Computer and the Brain, a book which was published uh, uh, nine years after uh, the death of John von Neumann by his students. And the book to the right was randomly picked one of his books from a pure mathematics. Uh, this is the quotation again. And uh, why I choose John von Neumann? Because he had written his book on the mathematical foundations of quantum mechanics being 24 years old. And that was just at the beginning of the development of a quantum mechanics. And that is a book which created a one science, quantum mechanics, out of at least two different branches, which have been at that time developed. The one which was a wave mechanics, following uh, Erwin Schrodinger and what used to be called the matrix mechanics developed by the Werner Heisenberg. And it was John von Neumann wow. who using the mathematics uh, and uh, just following the advice of David Hilbert, he formulated a unique scheme which we now teach students as a, as a quantum mechanics. Therefore, last, uh, it was a year ago, when the team of individuals preparing the seminar uh, discuss what should be a topic for our lectures for the, the semesters, we choose a quantum mechanics. And what you see now on the screen is the prepare list of topics for our seminars, uh, which we taught, we offer to the participants for preparation. Quantum mechanics, because if there is any science, a branch of science, which is exactly following the von Neumann quotation. It works. This is a quantum mechanics. There is no more accurate science, presumably with except of the theory of the static theory of elasticity, due to which the building I'm sitting in it and giving the stock holds since 25 years. There are no other science which works so well as a quantum mechanics. I choose the von Neumann quotation for it. I could have also choose the other and probably uh, there is most of you knew the definition of a quantum mechanics by a also genius in science, Russian physicist Lev Landau, who uh, defined the quantum mechanics as a science which allows us to fast and correctly calculate required physical results. So these are the topics from the, for which we suggested to you for a, a seminar. There was lots of them. And surely they start with the history of a quantum mechanics, the history of a 20s. This was, this is a remarkable period of science. Uh, Everything was boiling in the 20s. Quantum mechanics was created. 
mathematics was changing. It was David Hilbert. It was uh, Stefan Banach. There was a tremendous collapse of a grandiose idea of David Hilbert that you can axiomatize mathematics, which collapse under the work of Kurt Gödel and a remarkable thing is that we are still discussing what actually those people were trying to tell us about the foundations of a quantum mechanics if you participate nowadays in the seminars in the quantum information sciences and if you look up at how many lectures as we speak all over the world in the physics institutes are given about the bell theorems and so forth you realize that we are still uh, immersed in the spirit of a discussion about the foundations of a quantum mechanics from the time of the 20s. And to our disappointment, uh, the plan we have uh, misfired. Uh, this is the list of the seminars which actually happened during this semester. We started in October and we finished uh, just a few days ago, to, so to say. And we basically have not get out from the 20s. Most of the seminar, except essentially without uh, uh, the two last seminar, three last seminars, was, were devoted to the topics which originated in the quantum mechanical world after this uh, 20s. And um, why that happened? That happened that it seems to me that some of our participants in the seminar have not really thought about that what is important in the profession of a physicist. And if you are joining the PhD school, then you at least have an idea of being a professional physicist, is to be able to talk physics, not talk about physics. And to talk physics, that also means that you are interested not only in the very narrow topic, which is your profession in a strict sense. Uh, this is extremely important that if you want to be a physicist, you have to be interested in what is happening in this whole edifice. It doesn't mean that you have to be fluent in the mathematics used by the string theories or to be able to go into the lab and operate the MBE machine or even to be able to measure the voltage in the socket in your apartment when something goes wrong with the with the light and you have to decide that is the fuse in your apartment or somewhere else which blow up the you you have to be interested in physics 
because the physics is, as I said, amalgamated block. Uh, you never know whether a discovery in uh, high energy physics will not revolutionize a calculation of a band structure of some futuristic semiconductors, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it turns out that our dear younger colleagues have picked up initially uh, historical topics. And then when the things to some extent deteriorated, we had to call several seminars just hours almost before a seminar was already announced. And that is uh, something which I suggest you to think about it. Uh, I repeat, it is important to be able to talk physics because you never know whether you will end up teaching physics at the college somewhere and there you will have to talk physics to the younger generation of people interested in that science. So uh, that is why uh, I am showing this list of the seminars uh, and I hope it tells you uh, something. How are the seminars? Most of the seminars were good. As you know, we offer you a possibility of sending a first version of a prepared presentation of a given topic to one of us. And uh, we did our best to read those things and uh, suggest you the improvements. The, the reason for it that, and this is a quotation from another giant of the twenties and of all the physics, Niels Bohr, never express yourself more clearly than you are able to think. What I notice looking through many of those introductory versions of your presentation was that um, they were very technically polished. The slides are perfect. The question is that hardly ever you mention what was the source of those sites. And uh, what was, and uh, the mentioning the source of the material used for preparation for that seminar is something what you should keep in mind for the future participation in any seminar. This um, words about the, how the seminar likes uh, should also suggest you the idea, why have you chosen that you should think about it why have you chosen physics, astrophysics, or whatever, 
as your PhD thesis field. I repeat, you have chosen a field which is working. It has a lots of interesting, still open problems. It's, it's just, it's in infancy. It's not that I am trying to tell you that this is a closed topic, like those professors talking to young Max Planck and telling him that he should study chemical engineering because a buyer is hiring people and paying a good salaries, but and developing so many new medicines, so many new fertilizers, so many new uh, agriculturally needed material and physics, everything is closed. Everything is understood. Um, no. We are physics is in its infancy. The discovery of uh, phenomena in the outer world, which the, this tremendous new knowledge, which we are gaining due to the experiments of our colleague astrophysicists, is uh, truly telling us that the revolution in physics, similar to the 20s, when the quantum mechanics was born, uh, it, it, it is coming. Nobody knows when it will happen, but it's going to happen. And uh, therefore, you have to get the interest in the physics not only in the very narrow field you are doing. It's not sufficient to be fluent in writing a complicated programs in Python or in other languages, to operate a complicated computer programs, calculating an incredibly complicated, solving very complicated equations, of general relativity and so forth. The important thing is to understand physics and as much of it as it is possible. Uh, this is important uh, due to the fact which was beautifully formulated by another great physicist from the 20s, who I was very pleased to meet years ago at MIT, Eugen Wigner. It takes so long to train physicists to the place where he or she understands the nature of physical problems that he is already too old to solve them. Well, you are still in a stage of being trained. That is, you fit the beginning of the Wigner statement. And unfortunately, I am already in the last line of it. Why recent years bring this understanding of physics, understanding of a science, and that it is an all, that you cannot be concentrated only on the very narrow part of it, is related to something, to the question which John von Neumann posted in the article published in the popular fortune magazine in June of 55. K 
can we survive technology? If you will open up today newspaper, I'm sure you will find at least one or two stories about the artificial intelligence. That becomes a craze recently after a few months ago, the access to the chat GPT was made public. The, the artificial intelligence is everywhere. And in many cases, the authors who are mostly phrased in talking about physics are frightening a general population that the artificial intelligence and the developments of a modern technology endangers a humankind. Uh, this, is an, uh, this is a quotation from von Neumann article. The great globe itself is in a rapidly maturing crisis, a crisis attributed to the fact that the environment is which technological progress must occur has become both undersized and underorganized. Undersized? Well, because the world become very close, very small. And uh, due to the telecommunication, I'm... Uh, Yes, I am now speaking from Warsaw, but equally well, I could have given this talk from a Tierra del Fuego. And the distance, geometric distance between a speaker and the audience is irrelevant nowadays. That is, by the way, a legacy of a pandemia. And underorganized? Well, it is sufficient to switch on the television to see the complete mumbo jumbo on essentially all the topics relevant to our everyday life mentioned by people who are supposed to be the organizers of our life. So we have the issue where we can survive a technology development. And quite remarkably, two years ago, in peak of the pandemia, the same Fortune magazine had a full issue uh, in March of the 2021, which was entitled, What Comes Next? And that was a collection of uh, articles which were frightening readers What's going to happen next? What endangers us through our life in the future? In addition to the, as I said, at that time, peak of a pandemic. There are several aspects of our life which requires us to be able to talk physics not to talk about physics only. One of them is, it is true that nuclear energy appears to be the primary source of practically all energy now visible in the nature. In the long run, systematic industrial exploitation of nuclear energy may shift reliance onto other and still more abundant modes. Well, that was set in the 55, 955, 68 years ago. That is exactly a situation which we face now. The world has a deep energy crisis. We're going to solve it. And a solution of it problem is not only in 
building up the better solar cells, making up a better plastic for uh, the wings or of those giants ventilators spoiling the landscape of so many areas in Europe and uh, or to the not really serious discussions about the new generation of a nuclear reactor and so forth. We are having the energy crisis. We have to talk physics to solve it. No, no other science is going to solve this problem. There is a reason to believe that the minimum space requirements for nature ways of operating are the minimum size of stars. Forced by the limitations of our real estate, we must, in this respect, do much better than nature. Nuclear energy, they, be it fission or fusion, is scale to operate safely and without any problem in the stars. In our small, very small spaceship called Earth, we, as von Neumann said, we must, in this respect, do much better than nature. We must, in this respect, do much better than nature. This is a tremendous quest. Uh, we are breaking for a few months, and perhaps we shall meet after the vacations for another seminar if we will be able to invent a good topics. So this is something I suggest you think about it. Physics seems to me, and I truly believe in it, is the only science which can at least attempt to provide a, maybe a partial, as always, solution to that quest. We must do better than nature because we have to solve the energy problem and the following climate problem and many others. And that is only possible path, the solution for it, for us, if we will understand a physics as the amalgamated block of science. So happy holidays. Thinks physics on it. Thank you very much.